Defence Dialogue, a podcast discussing contemporary challenges in the area of European security and defence. Brought to you by the Martin Centre with Nicholas Novaki. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Wilfrid Martin Centre for European Studies Defence uh, Dialogue podcast series. Uh, my name is Dr. Nicholas Novaki and I'm very happy to be uh, here with you um, discussing another very interesting topic. Um, today we're going to be focusing on um, on a very important topic, on a very Im- significant initiative to boost uh, global be- peace and stability in an age of uh, increased uh, great power competition. And this is the initiative um, by Finnish President Sauli Niinistö to boost the so-called um, Helsinki spirit. And um, recently, I co-authored uh, an opinion editorial that was published uh, in, in, in the Euractiv on this topic with, uh, with my colleague and a very good friend, Henry Vanhanen, who is foreign policy advisor at the National Coalition Party of Finland. And I'm very, very happy to have Henry here today as a guest as well to talk about this topic. Thanks a lot for being here, Henry. Thanks, Nicholas. Thanks for the invitation. It's great to be here. So to kind of give a very brief kind of overview of like what we're talking about, like when we're talking about the the Helsinki spirit. Um, I mean, to give a little bit of context, I mean, it's, it's first of all, like important to note that like for the last couple of years, I mean, the European Union itself has been very much engaged in, in two major internal reflection processes. Um, and, and these are, of course, the, uh, the Conference on the Future of Europe, uh, which is still ongoing, and, and then the Strategic Compass process, which seeks to provide kind of specific goals and guidance on how the EU security and defense policy should develop for the next five to ten years. And in addition, Commission President von der Leyen has also proposed that the EU should have a specific uh, summit for European defence uh, in sometime in spring 2022. There's, so there's quite a lot of different things uh, going on at the, at, at, the, at the time simultaneously in Brussels. But while the EU has been focused on these internal reflection processes, I mean, one, one, one European leader has um, proposed a very significant a new global initiative that has so far received relatively little attention from, from the European Union and from Brussels. Um, Finnish President Sauli Niinistö earlier this year introduced uh, an initiative called the uh, Reviving the Helsinki Spirit. Uh, and, and this Helsinki Spirit initiative um, is, is meant to kind of, it's, it's designed um, Oh, it, 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 it has been launched ahead of the 15th anniversary of the 1975 Helsinki Final Act, which is, of course, a seminal document that eased tensions uh, between the West and the East uh, during the Cold War and ultimately contributed to the end of the Cold War itself. So Minister is concerned about the, this deteriorating relations between great powers, Europe's decreasing influence on the world stage, the increasing hostility of, of the language in which um, global leaders talk to each other, uh, as, as well as the overall kind of deterioration of the, the, the international system. And, and um, he would like there to be a stronger commitment to the principles that were, uh, that were uh, kind of included in the Helsinki Final Act. And these include things such as respecting sovereignty, refraining from the threat of, or use of force, uh, settling disputes peacefully and respecting human rights and fundamental freedoms. And these are, of course, things that remain as valid today as they were in 1975 when the Helsinki Final Act uh, was agreed. And in a nutshell, the core of this Helsinki Spirit proposal is to focus on the forthcoming 50th anniversary uh, of the Helsinki Final Act, um, and, and, and especially on the spirit of, of, of Helsinki. And Minister's key idea would be then to have a, some kind of global focus and to involve countries also such as China that are not really members of the uh, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which is the guardian of the, um, of, of, of the Helsinki Final Act. And he hopes that through this Helsinki Spirit Initiative, uh, there could be enhanced uh, global dialogue, enhanced mutual understanding and, and enhanced trust between different countries not just like-minded ones, uh, with the aim of having another Helsinki summit then in, in 2025, when we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe. 
But Henry, I mean, perhaps you can kind of give us a little bit of kind of background on where this thing came from. Of course. Well, thank you. It's, of course, in, under, in, important to understand why this initiative has come around at this particular time. And this is mainly because of, as, as like you mentioned in 2025, 50 years have passed since the Helsinki Summit of the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe, the so-called CSCE. And in 1975, during, during those hot summer days in the middle of the Cold War, 35 heads of state and government uh, heads came together in Finland, in Helsinki, and signed the Helsinki Act, which of course was outlined. Uh, the document outlined an import, important set of values uh, principles and confidence building measures to improve mm-hmm. security and of course covered a broad list of areas for cooperation from the economy to science and technology and from the environment to human contacts and it has been said that the Helsinki summits CSC was a turning point in this east-west detent at the time and it, it's actually interesting that at the time it was criticized by many uh, because it was seen, seen as a confirming this so-called European post-war division. It was especially criticized in the United States media as seen as a, as a rollover to the Soviet Union, while in the Soviets they uh, celebrate as a victory because it, they achieved uh, uh, recognition for their uh, geostrategic and geopolitical goals. But yet the Helsinki Act, of course, turned out to be anything but just a final act and more than, more than a decade later, the process started in Helsinki and uh, it was a crucial factor in, in overcoming certain divisions. And of course, rather than solidifying the status quo, it actually spurred a dynamic change for better. And in this sense, of course, it, it, it's a remarkable milestone, which is worth remembering. And, and I think in Finland, they have understood that as the milestone is approaching, it's, it's more than suitable that Finland should propose something like this, or at least in the OSC format, they expect Finland to commemorate this Helsinki final act in some ways. But it's been interesting that, uh, as you mentioned, that President Minister has actually, he has taken just the spirit of, of this initiative. We're not talking about organizing something at the OSC framework necessarily, because that seems to be more or less challenging because of the tensions that we are experiencing in Europe right now. Therefore, Nina Stastik's his, his, um, sort of idea revolves around taking the, the Helsinki spirit and perhaps enabling it in, in other formats. Where we're not talking about the OSC framework. We want to have a, hmm. uh, a, uh, a sort of conference around the spirit of Helsinki, what it means today. And I think this is the, the sort of interesting part of it that it's not just about European security. It, it actually has a very wide geographical uh, context. For example, Insta has spoken, spoken with um, uh, Xi Jinping about the initiative, uh, among others. So, well, the challenge remains how to find an, a common agenda combining countries from uh, Vancouver to Beijing, so to say. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that it's, it's coming like at this like around the same time that like President Biden in, in the US is also kind of trying to kind of take work forward on on this summit of, of democracy. And I, I think it was it this, this week that we got the list of, of invited participants from the State Department. So about 110 10 countries or so. And, and of course, the summit of democracy kind of seeks to boost like dialogue and, and enhance commitment to common and shared values among like-minded democratic countries where whereas kind of the the, the Helsinki initiative is is is, is uh, slightly different in, in the sense that it's more global in nature and I think there's there's a concern um, among kind of among kind of certain people in Europe and elsewhere that that's uh, what could happen with with this um, summit for democracy is, is that it could also kind of while in enhancing the commitment to shared values among democracies, it could also kind of incre- increase tensions like uh, at the global level more broadly. But I, I think kind of there are kind of two sides of the same coin in a way, uh, where, whereas ideally we would have a summit for democracy that would strengthen the, the, the shared commitment to uh, values and principles among democracies. And then on the other side, we would have this 
uh, Helsinki Spirit Initiative that would seek to enhance global dialogue at, at a more broader level. And I, I think they go hand in hand quite nicely. Yeah, they do. And I think the, the sort of key idea behind Nista's proposal is that it, it stresses the importance of engaging with those who don't necessarily share one's own values and principles uh, from the perspective of global peace and stability. It's, of course, important to maintain some kind of, uh, some kind of a, um, how would I say it, uh, to, to, to bring some kind of um, predictability to international relations. And I think this is, this is the idea that we're seeking. This is, of course, tied into our, our context, to our time, that right now I think what we are trying to achieve between, uh, for example, great powers is that there will be at least some sort of dialogue to avoid unnecessary escalations. Mm. We had a very low point right now where even the idea of just sitting around the same table could actually be better than, better than nothing, to, to, to be honest. For example, I think Ukraine, what is going on in Ukraine right now in the, in the uh, military buildup in the borders, again, is an example that if we are not sure what we are thinking about each other on the other side, that actually does raise a bit the risks for escalations. And I think this, this Helsinki spirit is, 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 is exactly trying to uh, reverse these trends and, and trying to bring some sort of predictability at least to get an idea that what we do not agree about, then not talking to each other. Yeah, the, the, the challenge though, of course, is that like these days, because of the the, the, the very politicized, uh, very, um, very, very intense environment in, in, in which politicians and, and, and experts also exist. And it's uh, sometimes even sitting around a common table uh, between people like who don't necessarily share your own values and principles could be seen as a, some, some kind of reward to them and something that should therefore be avoided. Um, but, but, and I think this is probably like one of the reasons like why so far, like we haven't heard, like we've heard very little or actually like nothing from the European Union on, on this uh, Helsinki spirit proposal, because I would, there is a certain group of countries like who would, who are very averse to any, any kind of, kind of high level engagement, for example, between Europe and, and, and Russia. And they would see that if, Europe were to engage more forcefully with with actors such as Russia and China, that would legitimize in a way like what what they what, what Russia is, for example, like trying to do at the moment in in Ukraine. It would give a further legitimize like China's uh, claims to be a, a revisionist uh, global power. But but at the same time, I mean, it's it's I, I do think that it's it's necessary to 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 sit around that common table because I mean, if 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 we can't kind of have dialogue, I mean, then like like you mentioned as well, Henry, that then like then the the, the room or the space for miscalculation and escalation in a crisis, I mean, just simply like grows grows too much, and and. Um, I think it's important for leaders to meet face to face and leaders to kind of to discuss these issues, even if they disagree. I mean, it, it does create a certain type of uh, thin layer of stability, I guess, uh, that could be useful in and in, in beneficial in a crisis situation. But I, I also think that, I mean, it's important to emphasize that, like, while Nienister has been kind of driving forward this Helsinki Spirit Initiative on the one hand, on the other hand, like he has been kind of advocating very strongly also for, for, for enhancing the European Union's own capacities for becoming a more effective, more responsible, more credible international actor. I mean, just this week, for example, I mean, he gave two very interesting speeches in, in Berlin, one on the Helsinki spirit and one on, on strengthening the EU's own uh, security and defense policy. So I think this initiative kind of needs to be understood not as some kind of um, uh, bow to, to countries that are trying to undermine Europe's stability mm -hmm. around its right. borders. Like that's not what it is, but it's 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 trying to kind of maintain a level of stability while also kind of ensuring that the EU itself like has the means and capabilities to um, uh, act when necessary. No, no, absolutely. I mean, we have to separate between validating certain activities then valid and, and validating the fact that what are the differences to that we have with each other. I mean, those are very different things. 
we shouldn't treat this as a reward system to legitimize certain governments and, and, and actors and their uh, and their policies right now. This is not what the Helsinki spirit is about. It's it's as, as mentioned before, trying to at least agree what we disagree upon. And I think that that's that's the core issue here. But of course, we do have challenges for the Helsinki spirit. I mean, what we're seeing, for example, uh, by the Belarusian hybrid attack, uh, the Russian massing of military forces, uh, just generally the relations between uh, China and the United States, EU and China. I mean, sure, we're not talking about a simple practice that we just get together and then we find a way forward. I don't think nobody is expecting that. And then, of course, some would say that this isn't the right moment to increase dialogue, but I, I, I think it's exactly the opposite. This is exactly the reason uh, why reviving the Japanese spirit could be worthwhile. It was already seen back in the day as a difficult, the, the uh, 1975 summit seen as an impossible, and it, it came from the Soviet initiative. It was not something that was wanted by the West, but at the end of the day, it ended up, ended up being productive for the West as well. So I'm not saying that we should look at this process as it, as as from a who gets most out of it, we should try to look at it that we will all get most out of it. And in this sense, I of course understand that it of course creates certain certain pressure for the agenda as well. And perhaps the agenda could be looser and the concept be based on a meeting to discuss values, rules, security, rather than on clear policy objectives. Mm. One could consider what the legacy of the Helsinki spirit means today, would there be some common goals for the modern world as well? At least it could point out clearly the source of these disagreements between parties and at best perhaps it could help to avoid escalation and bring some level of predictability to international politics. I think this should be the sort of uh, key idea behind the Helsinki spirit summit that we're trying to uh, see if there's any room for right now. Yeah, indeed, and 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 this is of course something that, like enhancing multilateralism and dialogue between uh, actors on the international level, is something that is very much in the very DNA of the European Union as well, and and, and something that is, like, part of the core of what EU foreign policy is all about. Exactly. And I think kind of in this sense, I mean, it it makes it would make com- complete sense for the European Union as well to embrace this Helsinki Spirit Initiative. Because, I mean, it, it would kind of promote the type of value-based foreign policy that the union is, is, is very fond about. And also because it very clearly would advance the goals of, of, of documents such as the EU's kind of most recent uh, multilateralism strategy as well, which, which talks about like the importance of, of, of dialogue and engagement as, as well very, very significantly. Um, and I think kind of a historical record, it's also important to note that like during the original conference on uh, the security and cooperation in Europe. I mean, European Union foreign policy or the the, the European community, the, the the predecessor of 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 the modern European Union, and especially its uh, European political cooperation, which was the name of um, this common foreign policy cooperation among the then nine members of the European community and which eventually became the, the modern common foreign and security policy that the EU has. This European political cooperation played a very key role in coordinating the, the foreign policies of the nine European community members. And in the end, like this significantly like boosted their ability to, to kind of shape the outcome of the conference and uh, get uh, all, all of the participants in the, co- in, in the, in the conference to uh, commit to the uh, types of values and principles that eventually ended up in the document that also, and then also like contributed to the de-escalation of tensions and finally to the end of the Cold War itself. So the European Union has a stake already in this in, in, in this process, I think, and, and, and it should kind of therefore, I think, pay, pay more attention to it than, than what it has. Right, and I mean, especially considering that uh, that Finnish president minister has raised the initiative already with, with, with world leaders such as Merkel, Macron, Putin, uh, Xi Jinping, and, and Vice President Harris. So I, I would expect to, uh, at least hope to see a sort of stance by the European Union, at least uh, from, from the high representative or perhaps the commission president of the issue. That would be uh, very welcomed. Yeah, indeed. I mean, well, I think uh, we'll, we'll have to kind of 
wait and see kind of what comes and 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 it it would be um it would be very positive i think i mean if if, if like you said the high representative the president of the commission or perhaps even the president of the european council kind of would, would also kind of take this uh on board but i mean there are many many things on the eu's agenda of course and things are things are messy so i mean uh, it might take a little bit of time but um to kind of uh keep things kind of um, brief i mean i don't want to keep you any any longer henry thank you so much kind of for 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 being here today and and being a guest in in, in this episode i really appreciate it uh, and i think we had a very interesting discussion and, and i hope you the listeners uh, enjoyed it as well and uh Hopefully you have a very good day wherever you are and and, uh, please join us again in the future for another episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was today's episode of Defence Dialogue. Subscribe to our podcasts for more.